What's up guys? Today I'll show you a horror comedy film, Visible Secret. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins 15 years ago in a busy street in Hong Kong. A man was clutching a small girl. He reassured her that she will be free once her parents paid their debts to him. It's alluded to that the girl was given by her parents as collateral to the man in exchange for money. Another man impatiently walked through the throng of people gathered near the intersection. He was pushed onto the road and was promptly hit by an oncoming bus. The man stood up, and the people watching gasped, because his head was no longer attached to his body. The crowd panicked, and in the chaos, the girl got separated from the man holding her. As the headless man walked around the alleys with his limbs twitching, the girl knelt down and came face to face with the disembodied head. Years later, a hairdresser named Peter meets a pretty girl named June in the club. She gets accosted by her ex-boyfriend in the same club, and she pretends that Peter is her boyfriend. The two strangers walk out of the club together. They hang out in a bar room, where the bubbly June sings to her heart's content. While in the middle of their conversation, June suddenly shrieks and tells Peter that they have to go. When they leave the room, the lights start to flicker. Peter takes June to his cramped apartment. He asks her why she suddenly left, but she changes the subject. She bursts into tears and tells him that her ex never believed her. Peter does not really know how to handle June's erratic moods, and to his surprise, she tongue massages him. The two slept together that night. Peter wakes up the next morning and discovers that June is gone. She had stolen $50 and painted the door of the bathroom with red paint. Peter and his roommate hear some strange growls coming from inside. When they fling open the curtain, they see Peter's father slumped on the bathroom floor. The father was diagnosed with Alzheimer and was currently staying in a retirement home. He was the one who smeared the door with red paint. He tells Peter that he's possessed, but Peter does not believe his smelly bullshit. The father is taken to the hospital to recuperate. He wakes up and seems to be in a much better mood. He reminisces about how he first saw Peter's mother when they became neighbors as children. Peter walks out of the hospital room and catches a glimpse of a nurse pushing an old woman in a wheelchair. He thinks it's June, and he follows her outside to the garden. But the nurse disappears, and Peter only manages to catch up to the wheelchair. He sees that the old woman is blind. Peter is distracted when he starts his shift at the salon that day. The boy he's handling is fidgety, and he accidentally nicks his ear. Blood pours out of the wound, and the boy's mother throws a fit. Peter gets fired because of this. His roommate, who also works in the salon, tries to cheer him up by taking Peter out that night. He introduces Peter to a female friend, and that friend also brings June along. There are also two other men and three other women who are tagging along with them. The group stays at a seaside resort for the night. The place is reportedly haunted, and the girls are giggling and trying to scare each other. They have dinner on the beach, and Peter starts telling a story about a girl who got into a fight with her boyfriend. She went to that resort and called her boyfriend, threatening that she would kill herself. Her boyfriend didn't believe her, and so she slit her wrists and died. After dinner, the rest of the group goes back to their bedrooms. June and Peter share a moment together, and they're about to have a tongue massage, when suddenly a strong gust of wind blows the windows open. A strange singing voice can be heard coming from the bathroom, where their friend Fatso stays. They open the door, and see her squatting in front of the toilet, repeatedly stabbing her thigh. There are now multiple bleeding holes on her thigh, Peter tries to help her, but June stops him and says that Fatso is possessed. Fatso stands up and goes out to the balcony. Peter follows her and tries to make sure she's okay. She breaks out into a smile and tells Peter that she's been waiting for him for so long and she wasn't sure if she believed him. It seems like Fatso is possessed by the ghost of the girl who committed suicide while waiting for her boyfriend. Peter pretends he is the boyfriend and assures the ghost that he will never leave her and urges her to leave Fatso because she's too skinny to possess such a fat body. The ghost takes advantage of Fatso's body and gives him a greasy tongue massage before losing consciousness, finally ending the possession. On the ferry back to the city, June shares with Peter that she has a third eye that enables her to see spirits. Ever since she was young, she's been seeing ghosts all the time. Her supernatural abilities were so strong that she would be so disturbed by what she saw. A priest gave her an amulet to limit her powers so she can live a normal life, but the amulet's recently been weakening. She'd also wear shades that block out her other eye. Peter does not really believe in June's bullshit story. When they get back, Peter walks June to her apartment. He tells her he wants to see her again, and she answers vaguely while giving a coy smile. The two of them soon hang out in Peter's apartment together. Their relationship deepens, and they enjoy their days getting to know each other. One night, Peter wakes up alone in bed. He hears someone calling for him outside. Peter unlocks the door, and it's his roommate outside. June and Peter meet young boy while playing in a nearby playground. The other kids enjoy their company as well. Later that day, Peter notices that June is no longer wearing her ghost blocking shades. Before she can explain, a large snake crosses their path. Peter deftly grabs the snake and flings it away. 
Despite the happy relationship, Peter is struggling to find jobs in other salons in the city. He's running out of money and tries to conceal his financial troubles from June. Peter gets the idea to work in her family's snake shop. But when he gets there, he discovers that his hardworking brother had turned it into a snack bar instead. That night, Peter is playing with a coin. He flips it, and as it floats in the air, his father walks into his apartment. He looks lucid and gives Peter some advice about admitting his mistakes. He also tells Peter that he will unconditionally support him. The father hands him a bar of chocolate and then disappears. Peter realizes that tears are streaming down his face. The coin lands on the floor, and he realizes that he had fallen asleep. The phone rings, and someone informs him that his father had hung himself with his hospital bed sheets. June attends Peter's father's funeral, but quickly runs out of the room. Peter chases her, but she has already disappeared. A relative informs Peter that June had visited his father in the hospital before his father died. A nurse there was staring at him creepily for five straight minutes. The relative had recognized June as the nurse. Peter meets with June in a restaurant. He asks her why she fled the funeral, but once again, she's tight-lipped. He then asks her why she was staring at his father in the hospital. Instead of answering, June abruptly stands up and walks away. Peter follows her to a secluded park. He sees her meet with the young boy they befriended before. The boy is crying, and he tells them that he's scared of his mother. They visit the mother at their house. Peter notices spirits fighting over the woman's soul. June confirms that she's possessed. The mother is displaying strange behavior and he talking to people they could not see. The spirit inside the mother confesses that when she got to Hong Kong, she realized that the man she loved was married. Still, she stayed with him, and he died soon after that. The mother had spread lies about the spirit, who was her neighbor. So when the neighbor died, she swore that she would take the mother with her. June argues with the spirit, telling her that the mother does not deserve to be possessed. This angers the spirit, and she locks them inside the apartment. She starts growling with an inhuman voice, then she attacks Peter. June unlocks the door, and she runs out of the apartment, but the spirit gets a hold of Peter. The spirit drags Peter to a hallway, but suddenly stops and starts slapping herself. June tells Peter that a male and female spirit are fighting over who gets to possess the body. While the spirits are distracted, June and Peter huddle in a corner. The spirits finally let go of the body, and the mother is cured. After their paranormal encounter, Peter gets frustrated with June. He's fed up with her secrets and her inability to open herself to him. June just cries and leaves. She gets home and cries some more in her bedroom. Then the phone rings, and she urgently leaves her apartment with her eye patch in hand. She doesn't know Miss Peter stalking her from the shadows. He follows her to a wooded area, and watches as June meets with a priest wearing ritual robes. A parade of people holding up lanterns crosses through the forest. A group of men come up behind Peter and beat him. They warn him to stay away. Peter wakes up at an intersection. He sees a memory of the younger him and his father walking along a road. He had gotten bad grades, but his father comforted him with a bar of chocolate. The now adult Peter silently cries and apologizes to his father. He hugs him wholeheartedly. But when he pulls away, he realizes that his father's body is headless. Peter wakes up as dawn is breaking. He's still in the same intersection in his dream. He walks around the still empty streets of the city and approaches his brother. He asks him for a job there, and he agrees. Peter happily works in the shop, but he breaks a few bottles. His good-natured brother doesn't hold this against him. While on a break, Peter asks his brother when their father has become sick with Alzheimer. His brother answers that it was the same year that an accident happened on the street, which caused the head of a man to be severed from his body. Peter decides to research the incident. He finds newspaper articles in the archives. One of the pictures includes a young girl with a birthmark on her elbow. Peter realizes that June has the same birthmark, and she might be connected to what happened to his father. Peter meets up with a female friend in his apartment. She is helping him get a job at another salon, so she lets him cut her hair in preparation for his interview. However, June abruptly storms inside his apartment and tells Peter that the ghost from the boy's apartment is out to get him. But Peter no longer trusts her. He demands that she get out. June complies, but continues to watch him from afar. Late of that night, Peter looks at pictures of him with his father before falling asleep. When he wakes up, June is on top of him, holding a paintbrush doused in red paint. He looks around and sees that his body and nearby walls and floor are covered in red paint. Peter truly believes that June is unhinged and he tells her that he never wants to see her again, but June just looks concerned for him. Peter now feels uncomfortable staying in his apartment alone, so he meets up with his roommate. The roommate suggests that they stay in his mother's house to be safe. Peter takes a bath, and when he steps out, the mirror in the closet shows that he's headless. This makes him do a double take, but when he looks at the mirror again, his reflection is normal. In the middle of the night, Peter wakes up, completely covered in red paint again. When he stumbles out of the bedroom, he sees his roommate sprawled on the floor below. Peter hurriedly goes to his roommate and asks him if he's okay. 
but the roommate is scared and tells him that it was Peter who pushed him down the stairs. He had woken up in the middle of the night and saw Peter painting the doors with red paint. When he had asked him what he's doing, Peter appeared angry and spoke in an inhuman voice before throwing the roommate down the stairs. This makes Peter realize that June isn't the one responsible for the things he's been experiencing, and that he's being possessed by a malevolent spirit. He rushes out of the house and goes to June's apartment. He sees her ex-boyfriend accosting her once again, so he rescues her by pretending to be possessed. Once the ex leaves, Peter apologizes for not believing her. In turn, June reveals that she didn't know his father at all, but when she saw him in the hospital, his eyes looked familiar, which is why she was staring at him. Peter has an idea that the bizarre happenings can all be traced back to the headless man incident 15 years ago. He asks her if she was there that time, but June has forgotten all her childhood memories. June tracks down the priest, who had created the amulet that limits her powers. Peter accompanies her, and enlists his services to get rid of the spirit possessing his body. The priest was the same man, who Peter had seen meet with June that night in the forest. It turns out he was conducting a ritual that time. The priest reveals that he doesn't even believe in religion or ghosts. But somehow, the amulet he gave to June had worked, and he became a professional priest ever since. June also shares that the priest had picked her up on the same street, where the headless man incident happened 15 years ago. The priest shares that the man died because someone had accidentally bumped into him, causing him to get run over by the bus. This confirms that June was the girl shown in the beginning of the film. June suddenly freezes and remarks that the headless man is right beside her. He possesses the priest's body, and he moans in an inhuman voice, demanding that they give him back his head. Peter and June run their smelly ass out of the apartment, with the headless man chasing them using the priest's body. The headless man then possesses Peter's body. He reveals that it was Peter's father who pushed him that day onto the road. Ever since then, he had enacted his vendetta against the father by possessing him and causing the rest of the world to think he has Alzheimer's. When the father died, he exacted his revenge on Peter, because he is the son. June suddenly regains her memory of the incident and tells the headless man that he wasn't pushed by Peter's father intentionally. He had actually been shoved by a lady, holding a basket in the crowd, causing the father to bump into the headless man accidentally. This convinces the headless man to leave Peter alone. Later on, Peter and June visit his father's grave. While walking in the cemetery, Peter notices that June's memory is fading, and she can no longer remember the time they spent together. They encounter the boy's mother from earlier. She's sitting by a gravestone with June's name and picture on it. She explains that her daughter had killed herself in a seaside resort, because her heart was broken by her boyfriend. This was the same urban legend Peter had heard before. The mother adds that every time she visits her daughter's grave, she plays her favorite song. It was the same song that June heard in the resort. It turns out June has been dead for a long time, and she is a spirit wandering the city. The movie ends with June melancholically singing her favorite song to Peter. This is Daniel's CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.